Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Oil washes. I've been using them exclusively on my terrain builds for the better part of the last year. Oil washes are far richer in pigment and color. They flow much more easily into crevices. They can be mixed in really great ways. They give you a lot of working time. Most importantly, they can be wiped off and cleaned up once dry. I am certainly not an expert on oil paints or oil washes washes, but I have been using them successfully for a while now. I think I know enough to get you started. There's another question a lot of you are gonna be asking me though, where did I get this sick shirt? I'm happy to tell you that this shirt came from today's sponsor, Into the AM. They have really nice colors on them. It's a nice ink. It's not gonna crack and fade quickly. And the shirts themselves are super soft. My favorite part about them is that they're actually fairly long fitting. I'm 6'2". Shirts are often like belly shirts on me, but these ones fit nice and long, which I really appreciate. They don't shrink in the dryer. They're a really nice blend, uh, cotton and polyester polyester, so they're stretchy, they're not scratchy, really, really soft. That's a perfect D&D shirt. They are offering my viewers 10% off using the link in the video description below. Right now is the best time to use it because between November 19th and December 5th, there's actually a Black Friday sale from 20% to 80% off of items. And if you use my promo link, that's going to stack on top of it. Check them out. Let me know which is your favorite. Use the link posted below and get yourself some comfy, nice fitting shirts. First of all, what the heck is an oil wash? Your typical acrylic paint is gonna be water-based. So you can thin it with water, you can wash it with water. The mediums that bind it are water-based. Oil washes use oil paints. These are paints where the pigments are suspended in an oil, usually linseed oil, but not all the time. And that means these paints need to be thinned down and mixed with something that works with oils. You cannot mix oil and water paints. Do not try to thin your oil paints with water. There are a lot of oil paints on the market and they range greatly in quality. Thankfully for our purposes, that doesn't matter. You can definitely use the cheapest ones you can find. They will work just fine. Easiest one, being the Windsor and Newton ones. This is just the series one, I guess is what it's called. It's not their fancy artist grade ones. They are plenty good enough for making washes for terrain. You don't need to buy these giant tubes. This size is fine because a little goes a long way. There are hobby brands that make oil paints specifically for models. The quality of those isn't gonna give you much advantage over these ones, but there will be a lot more colors that are maybe suited to you know hobby use, game, terrain, model usage. For just starting out, this is all you need. The most confusing part about making these and using these, and it was for me, is the solvents. Traditionally, uh, a lot of artists use turpentine to thin oil paints. That stuff's pretty harsh. You just need to use some sort of paint thinner, mineral spirits, white spirits. This is really confusing because they're called different things in different countries. You can buy them at the hardware store. You can buy them at the art store. Hardware store might be cheaper, might not be labeled in an obvious way, and you might be getting something that's a lot stronger. So my advice, if you're just starting out and you don't know what the heck you're doing, do what I did. Go to your art supply store and just buy the paint thinner from the art supply store. It might not be the cheapest one, but you know it's gonna work. What is this brand? Mona Lisa? but I buy this at Michael's. It works just fine. The smell is very minimal. Keep in mind though that just because it doesn't smell crazy bad doesn't mean it's not like harmful for you. Be cautious, use some ventilation. Again, there's hobby brands that make specialized thinners for making washes on models. They're gonna dry faster or slower or matte or gloss. Sure, if you once you get established with these and you wanna get freaky with them and get really specific, go for it. But for now, just one bottle of Art Store odorless thinners is all you need. The most important thing you need to know with these washes is that they work really well on top of acrylic paint or uh, acrylic ink. Basically anything acrylic, you can put oil washes on top. It's not gonna damage them. It's not gonna hurt them. You don't need to varnish them first. 
it works wonderfully. On primer, mm, it might not flow as well just because primer it has a little bit of tooth on it and it might grab it a bit more, but you can go right on top of spray primer. So I got a couple pieces here with some acrylic inks and some acrylic paint and some just primer exposed so we can see how to mix these up and how they react. Because these are oil-based, there's a lot of oil in the tubes. You don't need to mix these up or shake them or anything. The pigment stays really well suspended. It is helpful and it will make your washes dry a lot faster if you first put them onto some cardboard because that will leach some of the oil out and you can let it sit on here for several minutes an hour whatever for mixing i just use disposable cups clear is nice because you can kind of see the consistency of your wash but they are a little little large and wasteful so i'll generally use these little paper dental cups and when i'm preparing i'll usually make a couple and this way i can mix them as i apply them on the actual pieces now i'm putting on gloves here you don't you don't need gloves this is not really like a dangerous material or anything it can irritate your skin mostly i just find it easier to wear gloves than wash up you're gonna to wanna to use your old cheap brushes, damaged brushes or just cheap ones because once they become oil brushes, they should stay oil brushes and it will destroy them. It's gonna eat away at the glue on the ferrules. Don't use your good brushes. And it helps considerably if you get yourself some pipettes. You wanna start with your thinner and the easiest way to get a controlled amount is with a pipette. So a good rule of thumb, the amount of wash you envision needing, start with that amount in thinner. So here I got, you know, half a pipette full. I'm gonna grab a brush and a little bit of black paint. Maybe that's even too much there, a little bit, and mix it up. Now the thinner you mix this, the more it's gonna flow. But again, unlike an acrylic wash, if it goes on too heavy, that's okay because you can wipe it off. You can kind of see here when it gets to a consistency where it flows on the cup, but it's still pretty pigmented, that's generally about right. And when I'm making a bunch of washes, I don't clean the brush too much in between. If I'm gonna go to something like a brown, yep. just keep using the same brush, it's fine. For rust, you can take some really bright orange with the dirty brush, it's gonna Tone it down a little bit. You can mix in some burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Get some nice rusty colors. Let's uh, mix up some magenta here. Maybe add a little bit of purple to darken it up. And you can absolutely mix to your heart's desire your colors in these. That's what's so great about it. It's a beautiful color. Now applying them is really easy. These two here both just have white ink on them, faded out on all these. You can see some of the primer. This one has a gloss, well, satin varnish on top of it, which will make the washes flow a little bit more easily. Keep in mind, if you're using ink versus acrylic paint, inks tend to actually dry a little bit glossy anyway. Grab a brush, dip in your wash, and don't be afraid. You can see it just flows really nicely. And this is a pretty thick wash that I've made here. That's really it. Now let's see. See, it flows a little bit more on this one where I've varnished it, kind of spreads. But look, here we can start mixing some colors, putting in some browns, some reds. Maybe even let's mix up a little green. You can just dab it on and let it mix naturally. It's gonna flow and mix together in a really nice way. See, this is gray acrylic paint, so it's not glossy. So it's not gonna flow quite as much. You're gonna see it's gonna sit on top a little bit more, but you know, it still, still flows really, really well. some rust, some brown. Really, I just love the way that these can be mixed as you're working with them. Get really grimy, really sloppy. I absolutely love it. Now on top of a color like yellow, this black is really gonna, really gonna pop. 
Maybe add a little bit of brown for grime. And with bright colors, really vibrant colors, you can use washes that are of a similar tone and that'll make it look really, really rich. But you can also use black. You know, let's put black on half of it. Magenta on the other. Now, this magenta is a little bit light for this purple. Let's go to the black. Black should really make the purple pop out. And, and that's it for the application. To clean your brushes, you can clean it in some thinner if you want. I tend to just really wipe it off on paper towel and throw it back in the bin of brushes and it's fine. You can dab with paper towel to remove some of this excess now if you want. Right now, if I were to remove some of this excess you know, wash here, it's very wet and it'll remove it from the surface, but capillary action is also gonna pull it up out of the crevices which might not be what you want. If you have a ton of excess wash sitting that's just gonna take forever to dry, you can carefully dab it, but I wouldn't pick it up and really wipe it at this point. Mostly just wanna leave it alone so that it's nice and bonded in the spots where you want it to stay when you're wiping it off. Probably about an hour is gonna be enough. These are not yet completely dry. At this point, you can actually remove the wash from the surface without any solvents. I just wanna show you that here quickly. You can see how nicely that wipes away and all the little recesses have stayed nice and dark. I'm gonna let the rest dry completely so I can show you how to remove the wash once dry. <sighs> okay, it is the next morning and the coffee has not completely kicked in yet. It's now time to do the fun part. Now I left this overnight to dry, not because I had to, but because I could. Certainly could have wiped these down much sooner. Again, this is the really brilliant thing about oil washes is that you can leave them for quite a long time, walk away, come back later and wipe them off. You can use stuff like paper towels or you know cotton swabs, Q-tips, that sort of thing. But I prefer uh, makeup sponges. You can use these triangle wedge ones for larger things. And for smaller details, these little brushes are awesome. I buy these in bulk on Amazon. I'll put links to this and all the other stuff I can on Amazon so you can grab some. These I actually just buy from the dollar store. So cleaning is very simple. You just wanna take a little bit of your thinner, get some of that on your sponge. You don't want it to be soaking wet. Uh, you don't want it to be dripping because then it's going to get into those creases and you know reactivate that wash and you don't want that. You just want to be able to wipe away the top smooth surface. And look at that. Brilliant. Completely removes it from the surface, leaving it in all the crevices. And you know, I'm going for an extreme clean here. Get everything off. Brilliant. Here we're on the acrylic paint uh, on half of this and just the spray primer on the other half. And it's coming off just fine. And like, that's it. Absolutely awesome. A little bit of this uh, solvent thinner goes a really long way. Oh, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So satisfying. Definitely you wanna let this dry again. Won't take very long. Oil-based paints are very strong. You're not gonna hurt it by handling it once it's fully dried up. That being said, you may want to put acrylics over top. A lot of people will say that you can get away with just going on top and realistically you probably can. If you want to be safe though, what you can do is lock all of this in with like uh, a matte varnish. Uh, an acrylic matte varnish is fine and then you can proceed to other layers and steps. Although personally, I try to leave the oil wash as basically the last step in the process. Sometimes I clear coat it with a matte varnish if I want a more matte finish, but if it looks the way I want it to look, I'll, I'll just walk away from it. To dispose of leftover thinner or washes, I mean, one, you can kind of just like let stuff dry in the cup and then nothing really to worry about. Uh, but if you have a whole bunch, if you've been cleaning brushes, you poured too much out, I just pour it in an old container, saving it up, and one day I'll dispose of it properly. Just 
drop it off at your recycling depot where they take hazardous goods. So I hope this answers the question of what are oil washes and how do you use them? And it inspires some people who may have been nervous about trying them to actually get out there and give them a go. For me, they were a life-changing experience in the hobby. I absolutely love everything about them. Like I said, I've never gone back to acrylic washes since using these. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, share it around. Let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions that I haven't covered in this, drop them there and I'll do my best to answer them. If you wanna grab some tools or supplies, check out my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca. I am going to make a little list of the basic things you need for oil washes and put it in the video description below. Don't forget to check out the sponsor Into the AM. Use that link to get a wicked deal on some cool t-shirts. Of course, if you like these videos that I make and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. This is a real basic introduction. If you want a more in-depth look at oil washes and how to use them and how to use oils beyond just washes, check out Marco Frisoni's uh, video on the subject and his channel in general because it's an excellent resource and he really helped me get started in doing this and made me not afraid to just jump in. That's it. That's all. See you next video.